Hi, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. Chronic Lyme disease is finally getting the attention that it deserves. This can be quite a debilitating condition for the people who are stricken with it, and there usually is a lot of different symptoms that seem to come and go, and they might make no sense to the conventional medical establishment, right? These are head scratcher conditions. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of the symptoms is brain fog. So while there are things like chronic pains, wandering pains, exhaustion, fatigue, even sometimes digestive issues, depression, anxiety, sleep trouble, all the things you would expect with a complex chronic inflammatory condition, especially with a hidden pathogen like Lyme disease. But today we're gonna to talk about how to help brain fog, right, from Lyme disease, very important. Brain fog can be a big problem. When we start to lose our sense of clear attention and the ability to focus, concentrate, remember like what I come into this room for, what was I getting in here? Or another one that happens too that's especially frustrating is when people have their bottle of pills in their hand or supplements or something and the brain fog's so bad, you look at the bottle and you go, oh, is this in my hand because I'm about to take these or I already did and I need to put them away? And you can't even remember, okay? If this happens to you, you may feel like you're going crazy. You may have your friends and your family feel like you're going crazy. It can be really hard not to start to judge ourselves. I know. So I would encourage you to uh, don't judge yourself, right? Don't fall into that trap and just understand this is a symptom. This is a symptom. Just like if your computer, you know, if you dragged a super magnet across your computer, it wouldn't function very well, right? If you interfere with the hardware, then the function gets diminished. And our brains are hardware, right? We have uh, certain mental abilities that live in our brains. And if we have trouble with the hardware, we're gonna lose some of that conscious faculty, which I know can be really, really unsettling. I know, I've done my own dance with brain fog in the past. So I'm, I'm intimately familiar. It can be extremely frustrating. And when you lose your, your sense of cognitive abilities, you can also start to lose some of your identity. Okay, oh, I don't know who I am anymore. This isn't me, I don't feel like myself, right? Not easy to go through, but also it's not uncommon to feel this way. So when we look at brain fog, obviously, understandably, people want their minds back. Okay, we want, our, we want our life back from complex chronic illness, but we especially when we start feeling like we're losing our mind a little bit, we want to get that back. So what I'm going to go into here are some of the kind of common mistakes that people make when they're working on healing brain fog and recovering that cognitive ability. And we'll see that there's a theme to this, and we'll see that there is a way around these mistakes. And I want to give you the information so that you have a wider perspective so you're not falling into the traps and the pitfalls that I've seen other people fall into because it just basically it's gonna slow down your progress of healing. And every time you try something and fail, it's normal to lose a little bit more morale. So I don't want you to get burned out, all right? It's better to do this stuff right as best you can instead of try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, try, fail a thousand times. And then you're just like, oh, I feel hopeless, right? Let's not let it get to that. So one of the things that people try to do with uh, brain fog that is unfortunate is they're looking for a silver bullet. Okay, this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see patients and practitioners, by the way, make when they're trying to handle complex chronic health conditions. We're looking for that silver bullet. We're looking for that one thing. Now that one thing could take any shape, right? But it's, it's a paradigm. You might look at that and go, oh, uh, brain fog, I need to take certain vitamins or I need to take a certain nootropic supplement to help me with my focus. Or I need to take this pharmaceutical to try to get me focusing. Right? I need to take ADHD medicine or something. I need to take stimulants. Whatever it is, we're looking for that one thing. Or maybe we look at brain training, neurofeedback, right? Also, you know, can be helpful, but it's still one thing. It's just one thing. And this is the this is the challenge because we go around thinking there's going to be a one answer. Like I have one problem, what's the answer? What's the cure for brain fog? Well, it depends on the causes. And I don't say cause, causes. What are the causes? Because most people Here's something really important for you to understand. Most people have symptoms because you've got a couple causes happening at once, meaning our body is quite resilient actually, and it can handle some insults here and there. But when the insults start stacking up, that's usually when symptoms appear. So by the time somebody gets into my world, they're usually a complex chronic condition that has multiple causes all hitting at once, or they're taking turns. Because let's face it, if this was easy, if what you're dealing with was easy and was a quick fix and a silver bullet was going to work, then it would have worked for you and you wouldn't be watching this video, right? You wouldn't be looking for more help with this stuff. By the time someone gets to my world, I already know by default 
by default that they have multiple causes going on, which means we need to take a wider approach. So I really don't want you to fall into the trap if you can help it, right? Now, of course, I'm not giving out medical advice. This channel's not like medical advice, right? This is, these are my observations over years of working in the field, focused on complex chronic health conditions, helping a lot of people all over the world get their lives back. There are patterns that I've noticed, right? There are patterns of pitfalls and there are patterns of, if I take the most successful cases I've seen, people who are like bedridden, miserable, semi-suicidal, right? I mean, really low, low points in life. And those people can get their life back and be out backpacking and traveling on beaches and uh, dancing at their daughter's wedding and walking on cobblestone streets on a European vacation and all that kind of stuff. Then I, I look at those cases and I start to see patterns. I go, okay, what are we doing with these really successful cases? What are the factors influencing it? And I've got, I've got a lot in my brain about this, which you know I, I'm happy to share. But one of the things, one of the main things is a paradigm expansion of going, okay, I need to find the right key for this lock, right? I need to find the right supplement, the right silver bullet, whatever that's going to unlock brain fog for me. And instead, we need to realize it's a combination lock, not a key lock, right? We're going to need to enter several inputs in the right order to get that thing open. There's not just like one magic key. This is a big, big insight. It's a massive insight. And if I could share one thing with you, it's that to start looking at multifaceted approaches without getting overwhelmed. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. But the, the thing you got to understand is that the silver bullet thinking, it's not your fault, right? If you've tried and failed, it's not your fault. And your doctor, your practitioner, if you've seen a naturopath, Chinese medicine, whatever, functional medicine, whoever you've seen, if they've been doing it that way, trying to solve the problem with a key instead of a combination, it's not their fault. That is the default training status quo. That's how people think in general. Okay, it's not their fault. We need to evolve that if we're going to make any progress taking apart complex chronic inflammatory conditions. We just have to. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking about all this stuff, right? It's very, very important. So just know if you're struggling with complex chronic health conditions, you don't have to do it alone. I keep a group. It's a chat group. It's private. We keep it small and cozy. There's only a couple hundred people in there, max. That way I know everybody. You know, I can get to know the people in there. I do that on purpose, right? It's intentional. But what you'll have there is an international community of people just like you that are positive, great attitudes. They're all working on healing, making things better, right? Getting their life back. You can be in the community with us. It's fantastic. It's complimentary. It's free to join as a guest. And you're there. I'm there. And you can watch how I'm working people's cases and giving them suggestions and opening perspectives and all these things to try to help people get their life back and also when there's a backslide, when there's a rough day, because that happens, that's the reality of it, right? There are setbacks. You can see how we troubleshoot in real time and how we use our whole systems thinking, which I'll explain in a little bit, how we use our whole systems thinking to start to navigate new solutions, even when there's a setback. It's a wonderful place to be. I love hanging out in there and I've been able to help a lot of people. You'll make great connections. There is an application. So if you are interested, it's in the description below the video, click the application. Please be thoughtful with that. Please take your time because I read every single one, me personally, right? I read all that. I like to know who's coming in because we've got an awesome group and I aim to keep it that way. So if you look like a good fit for our group, I'll get you in as soon as I can. Just know that it's a small group and we do fill up. So it might be a month, hopefully a month or less, and I can get you in the group and you can have a chance to come in there. You've got access to me. I've got a vault full of videos that are interactive and really help fine tune some of this perspective so you can start to create a plan without getting overwhelmed. For your healing, right? It's fantastic. So that way you can start to, you know, not have to be a full-time self-doctor Googler, right? Going into Dr. Google or being on forums all night, you know, trying to look up things. We don't want that, right? We want structure. We want community. It's a solutions and support group. So if that speaks to you, hit the application and uh, there may be a bit of a wait. I'll get you in as soon as I can. In the meantime, you might consider subscribing to this channel for more health videos like this. It's fantastic. So when we look at silver bullets, okay, trying to make one thing fit one thing, what we're not doing is we're not taking into account the causes of brain fog, okay? And this is something else that it's not easy to understand, especially if you have brain fog, right? But bear with me, and, and I'm going to try to make this very, very easy to understand, is that your symptoms are speaking to you. Your sy symptoms are feedback from your body system. And just because we don't understand what the symptoms are trying to say doesn't mean that they're bad or wrong. Just like if you have a baby crying, you might not know what the baby wants, but that doesn't mean the baby's bad or wrong. It means we need to figure out 
what the baby's asking for, right? So it can be cared for and have what it needs. Your body's the same way. So a symptom like brain fog is a sign. We're getting a sign. And now it's time to start to decode what are the causes of this? Is it just one thing, right? Of course not. Like I said earlier, if it was just one thing, you would have handled it, you'd be better, you wouldn't be watching this video, you'd be out playing volleyball or taking a walk or whatever you wanna do, right? Because you'd be like healed. Okay, so obviously we're dealing with multifaceted problems, which takes some detective work. But I'm gonna break down for you how we look at this. You gotta go by body system, okay? Immune system, digestive system, your neurological and adrenal system. Think of stress, fight or flight, right? Your circulatory system, how blood flows through your body. These are the big four. And we use actually a four-stage approach. Immune, digestive, neuroadrenal, circulatory, there's a, a bonus fifth stage, which is all about boosting, right? If we're really depleted, most people start there. And in fact, they should be starting with getting the inflammation down, right? So what do these systems have to do with brain fog is that there's not just one cause. And what I mean by this is you can have brain fog, right? Difficult cognitive abilities for multiple reasons. One of them is immune. If you have a heavy inflammatory load, for example, from a latent pathogen, like a virus, like a bacteria, or a spirochete bacteria, right? Like a fungi, like mycotoxins, or even inert latent pathogens, like heavy metals, microplastics, right? All this stuff that's out there now in the environment, any of that stuff can be causing inflammatory issues. These can manifest as autoimmune conditions, autoimmune-ish conditions, autoimmune-like conditions, suspected autoimmune conditions, right? But it causes low-grade inflammation all the time. And guess what we have in our brain, right? We've got immune cells. We've got glial cells in our brain, which you can look that up, G-L-I-A-L, -L, glial cells, right? This is the brain's immune system. And when we have a high inflammatory load in the body, guess what? The brain gets inflamed too. So no wonder there could be cognitive decline. No wonder there could be brain fog, right? That's the immune. Now, digestive. What if we have a leaky gut type situation? What if we've got an inflammation in our intestines? Now we've got permeability. Now we've got food allergies going off. Is there a digestive component? Is it interesting to consider that we're now learning that the gut permeability also correlates to blood brain barrier permeability, meaning that when one starts to expand, the other is going to have a reaction as well. And now we can have things getting trapped in the brain that shouldn't be there, like waste products or metabolites really interesting. You know, our brains flush just like any other organ. It's going to have inputs and outputs and our brain has waste. It eats fuel, right? It eats glucose or some people get on uh, ketones. You know, the, the brain is, is consuming fuel and it's working all day. It's very um, active. It's an expensive organ to maintain and it has outputs. It has waste, right? It has metabolic byproducts and those byproducts need to be cleared out. One of the ways that happens is called glymphatic drainage, right? Like lymphatic, but with a G in the front, glymphatic drainage. And that happens while you're sleeping. That's when your brain actually opens up and then the, the waste, this is so cool. The waste products come out, they've got a way to come out now and they can drain out into the lymph and then be excreted just like any other waste product. It's a special thing, right? So for example, if you have trouble with blood brain barrier and leaky gut, then there's going to be a correlation between the digestive and the brain. We also know about the gut-brain axis, right? I mean, there's a lot of connections there. And then third, so we talked about inflammatory, we talked about digestive, neuroadrenal. If we are so stressed out that we're not sleeping well or enough, then we don't give our brain that chance to have that drainage, the glymphatic drainage, right? It's not happening. Isn't that interesting? How about number four? Blood circulation, okay? If we, for some reason, have limited circulation, and there are different reasons why our body does that, even to try to protect us, then maybe the brain isn't getting the blood flow that it would need normally. So it's kind of like being choked, and now it's not functioning well. And you walk into a room and go, oh, what did I come in for? This cup? What is this? Well, really, your brain just is malnourished, right? Because the flow is not there. How do we know? How do we know which of these causes? And I just gave you four. There's more, right? But how do we know which of these causes? I would offer, I would offer that we actually do much better to troubleshoot our problems, our health problems, by instead of guessing and then taking the supplements, like, oh, I guess it's, uh, I, I guess my, I'm not having glymphatic drainage, so I should take some sleeping pills, right? 
oh, but it turns out that I'm still inflamed from this these latent pathogens or whatever I've got in my body, right? Oh, now I'm doing this. And you turn into this whack-a-mole machine and you're standing over your supplement drawer for 40 minutes looking at all the bottles going, oh, which one is it, right? Instead of that, what if we had a plan architected out where you took these stages in order, like that combination lock, and you start with the immune system and you get the infl inflammatory processes down, right? Not just by subduing it, but also by helping your body to get rid of the pathogens that are in there, improving the liver function, getting things draining out, right? Learning how to break a sweat properly, having a little bit of kill strategies to help to clean up anything that shouldn't be there, but primarily focusing on your own natural lymphatic flow and your processes to get these things out of your body, right? Where they belong. And then stepping through that, right? You'll notice graduation signs. This is all stuff we, we work on in our group. You'll notice graduation signs, and then it's time to work on the digestion, the gut health. And then after that, there's graduation signs. And now we're working more on the nerves and your ability to sleep deeply. And so basically you're going through a systematic process so that no matter which one or more of these factors is causing the brain fog, you know, you can be confident, you can be sure that you're hitting them all sequentially. Isn't that cool? What a different paradigm. It's just like the combination lock, right? You just go through, you get the right number, go to the next one, right number, next one, and then the door opens. This is a whole different way to look at this. And we look at everything this way. Every symptom is your body trying to communicate what's going on with you. And with the right lens, with the right attention, with the right curiosity, with the right guidance and support, we can figure out what those things mean. And we can also use other signs to try to guess which of your systems are the most encumbered, right? Which ones are going to be the biggest that, that need the most attention, right? And you get the biggest wins from clearing that, but also having a plan so that no matter what, you know, you're going through everything because we're not human beings. We're not a machine. It's not just like a, a car engine that has one bad part that just needs replacing. It doesn't work like that, right? You can't just take out, oh, I just need to take out my immune system and put in a different one. And you know, my immune system's blown out, just replace it. Like it doesn't work like that. Everything's connected in there. You have to be strategic and you've gotta be patient and you gotta know what you're doing and be able to read the signs as you go. But once you do that, the rewards start to speak for themselves. Like when patients come back, clients come back and they say, Oh, I'm getting my brain function back. Like I noticed this, the people around me in my life notice this. They notice I'm getting sharper. I'm able to remember things. I'm able to think about something right for a longer period of time and focus. Oh, I had to stop working because I was having so much brain fog. I couldn't do my job. Now I'm back to work, right? This doesn't happen by silver bullets and, and little guessing, right? Trying to shove the right key into the right lock. It doesn't happen like that unless we get very, 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 very lucky right? It's not about trying to copy what worked for your neighbor or somebody on a chat forum or just what a random doctor on TV says or in a magazine or something like that. It's about understanding yourself and going through a process where no matter what, you're systematically making everything better, making improvements across all of your body systems, right? Which is really cool because it's not just about brain fog, okay? All the other symptoms are coming from that same clustered mess. And as we sort that out, a lot of things start to calm down together. It's a really, really fun process to be a part of, and it's very fulfilling to help people go through strategically and do this. So no matter what you're doing, right? Eastern medicine, naturopath, functional medicine, uh, conventional medicine, pharmaceuticals, like whatever it is, bunch of supplements, I would encourage you to, to consider organizing your approach so that you're not trying to do everything at once, okay? You can't put all the numbers in the lock at the same time. You gotta let them take turns. So try to organize your approach. That would be my my you know, again, not medical advice, right? I'm not your physician, but when I look at this stuff, that, that's a place I see people fail as they try to throw everything at it possible. So instead, there's a framework I just gave you, right? The million dollar framework here. Start with the immune system. Okay, for most people, that's a really good place to start. And that does a lot of the heavy lifting. And then there's gonna be less to clean up as you go. That's the idea, right? Most people do their heavy lifting, like stages one, two, and three is where they get the most. And then, you know, stage four, it's very minimal and with blood circulation because oftentimes the, the blood flow is starting to re-regulate anyway now that there's not a bunch of pathogens and stuff in there. And then stage five of supplementing and boosting, which is like a bonus stage, you know, that's optional for most folks if you start in the right place. So anyway, don't try to throw everything at it. Don't pray for silver bullets and you can overcome brain fog. You absolutely can. 
If this kind of thing is helpful for you, if you like these conversations, I would really encourage you to apply for our group. It's a wonderful place. There's nothing like it on the planet. It's the only one. It's amazing. I keep it cozy. I keep it small and I keep it very, very, um, you know, structured and honest. And I know the people in there so I can be very detailed. It's, it's wonderful. All right. There you go. Brain fog. Cheers.